Welcome to Doc Trailers. Today, Paul is going to be interviewing Ravit Marcus, director and producer of American Pot Stories. Let's get down, let's get down to this. Give you one more night, one more night to get it. We've had a million, million nights just like this. But today we have a special guest, Ravit Marcus, who is the producer and co-director of the American Pot Story fresh off a win at Slam Dance. Uh, we saw her trailer and we just thought, oh my gosh, this is so great. So uh, welcome, Ravit. So happy to have you here. Uh, why don't you tell us about how you found this story, how you fell in love with this story and figured, no, we're the ones to tell this. So uh, thank you for having me, pleasure to be here. Um, well, uh, my co-director and uh, partner in life and film, Dan Katsir, is a news junkie. And in 2010, early 2010, he just woke up in the morning, read the news as usual and shook me and said, wake up, there's gonna be a revolution and we have to televise it. And uh, he heard that this uh, group of people in Oakland are trying to legalize pot. And he managed to convince me that we're gonna film the revolution and in one year, we're gonna have a film in the can and a revolution. I thought, wonderful, why not? Let's jump in. Uh, and we, we really thought, okay, we'll see history in the making. And we did, but what we did anticipate that it's gonna take much longer than expected. And it ended up being a great lesson in civics for both of us, that change doesn't happen within a year. Because the first year they lost, their campaign lost. And we had the film with a very sad ending that didn't go anywhere. And we were very sad about it and kind of felt Everybody thought kind of that we wasted a year filming those hopeless romantics that thought they can uh, change the world and they didn't and that we wasted a lot of time and resources. And then after two years, we heard that they might be restarting. So even though we kind of gave up, we said, okay, let's see if we can, maybe we can uh, keep following the story and see where it goes. And we ended up starting again and filming what was happening and people changed and the objectives changed. And then there were more trials and tribulations. And again, the, the cha big change didn't happen. So we just kept following the story as it evolved. And by 2016, the big change happened and they did legalize. But by then we were so invested with the people in the movie that we felt that their personal journeys also deserve uh, a room in the film. So we kind of stayed with that until 2019, when really we felt we have this beautiful moment of culmination that even though the, the big revolution is still unfolding, we're not legal uh, federally, and that's a very important thing that needs to happen. Moreover, even with the legalization, there's many problems with equity in the legalized space and other issues and a lot of regulation that is causing problems, especially for the smaller uh, mom and pops uh, shops that we care a lot about and the people in our film care a lot about. Uh, so the revolution is not anywhere near done, but we felt we have a spot where we can stop, you know, filming, say, let's show it to the world and hope it helps make an impact so the war can continue. This is, uh, this is such, a, well, it's like falling in love and then it's like, wow, it's like, this is, you know, there's no time signature on this piece of music, you know? Yeah. It's like, well, I'm done with that now. It's like, well, no, I'm just actually now getting used to what the story is and who these people are and, you know, rededication and stuff like that is, uh, so how how was it that you came to be able to um, find the story and know the people and stuff like that? You just did you know someone or you just cold call and, hey, I'm Ravi and I'm a filmmaker and we love your story? Or uh, how did you how did you merge with the content? So it was exactly what you described, the cold call, because like I said, Dan just said, this is amazing and we have to, to film it. And he said, please, please call them because I'm the producer. 
And actually, it was a little bit longer than I told previously what happened in the beginning. I said, oh, I don't know if this is important. You know, I don't know if legalizing pot is that important. I was in a way uneducated, uh, just as a lot of people who see the film. And that's why it's important what we did. And then Dan started throwing facts at me that he, he knew would uh, affect my view of it, which is especially the aspects of the social justice and how the cannabis uh, uh, policy is used to funnel uh, people of color into the prison industrial complex. And that really made me very angry. And I said, OK, this is worth at least making a call and let's explore. So we called Oaksterdam University and we're told that we can come meet uh, the founder, Richard Lee. And we said, okay, let's go up there. We live in Los Angeles. So we drive all the way up to meet him. And uh, honestly, in the beginning, he just gave us a little tour of the school and then disappeared on us. And we were like, what? What's happening? But we want to, we need to know, are you committed? Are you gonna let us film? And then luckily we were, we remembered that we also talked to somebody called Dale Sky Claire and that she was a spokeswoman of the campaign. And we asked if we could meet her and uh, this wonderful woman named Salwa Ibrahim, who was Richard's assistant said, don't worry, I'll, I'll help you, it'll be okay. Uh, that's how Richard is, he's a recluse, he doesn't wanna spend too much time on camera, but he'll we we'll like to do that. So she introduced us to Dale and Dale was wonderful, kind of opened her heart to us, told us a little bit about herself and said, yes, we're gonna let you film this. And in a way we filmed them that year and they all let us and it was incredible. But really what happened when we kind of got back to filming after 2012, when they were hit by a dreadful federal raid and were really down on their luck and they kind of saw that we stayed there. We mm -hmm. filmed them, we mm -hmm. wanted to see where they were going. in the trenches everybody. with them. So it's like, yeah. no, now you're one of us. Yeah. It's not like, exactly. oh yeah. You know, TV news, you're going to parachute exactly. in, grab the story, rip off the headline, and we never hear from you again. It's like, no, we're with you. Well, that exactly. makes it really different. I yeah. think I think that is uh, endemic, uh, I mean, totemic of your commitment to the idea and then how you merged with them. So here you are with this successful film. And uh, what is next? I mean, are is are you going to try for a theatrical run? Are you laying things out? Are you discussing this with distributors? Are you gonna self-distribute? Uh, you wanna stream? We, what's, what's next for you? We're still weighing our options. Uh, winning the audience award at Slamdance was such a great vote of confidence from the audience, which is what's most important to us. We want film that communicates with the audience, that the audience appreciates, can enjoy and learn from and want to tell their friends because that is uh, definitely something that opens the door for self-distribution, which we've done with previous films pretty successfully. So we definitely feel this is a community movie, which means that anywhere where there is a community with interest in the topic, whether for or against, they will have an interest in showing the film because our film is about policy and about activism. It really celebrates the power of the, the grassroots activists in America. And even people who are not interested in cannabis can resonate with the film if they ever fought for a cause that's close to their heart. So right. we want to show it in communities all across the country and also around the world, both as an inspiring reminder of your power that you can affect change. It takes time. There's a lot of, uh, it's a roller coaster ride, but if you stick with it, you, you can, things can happen slowly. One step forward, two back, but, but it's moving. So we are thinking of collaborating with local organizations all around the country, wherever they wanna show the film, we wanna show it. The first phase is uh, through film festivals to kind of uh, help us get the buzz because then they take care of the theater and you're all set and you have some PR machine with you. And that way it's easier to work with the local uh, activists mm -hmm. around it. But then usually when they see it, they say, oh, but so many people heard about it couldn't come. Can we show it again? And mm -hmm. that's how you work with them uh, to really show it. Because like I said, it's a big story. It was supposed to be just one year. It ended up being the story of a 10 year of change and how it's affected. And we never envisioned we'll, 
we'll make such a story. But now that we did, we really want a lot of people to see it. Uh, a review in Film Thread said it's a must watch for every American. So mm -hmm. we're just looking for whatever way through a distributor or self-distributed that will help us ensure this happens. Right. Yeah. And getting it out there. So as part of the package, if someone was to say, oh, come to Seattle and we want to want you to show the film. It's like uh, you have kind of a road show. It's like, it's not just the film, it's a discussion. So then yes. you take the message and they go, oh, okay. So in a way the film's an excuse to drive it deeper and just like, now we're talking, you know, I never met you before. And, you know, I was thinking the same thing. And I was thinking, you know, I'm the only one that's thinking this. And now we're talking about what do we do next? That whole exactly. community activism package, which is, really dear to my heart films i make are that way too i mean it's like it's it's great you know what i mean so, it's the, it's a conversation to draw starter. and now we're talking we showed it in churches uh during uh when it was a very early rough cut and that was a great conversation started because again we're talking about policy and really it opens a conversation are we treating our fellow man with compassion if we think that using cannabis is a problem why are we imprisoning the person who has a problem? Why are we not figuring a way to help him as a community, as people who believe in compassion? So the idea is to really look at policy and say, if what we've done is definitely not working, there's no end to the amount of research that shows that. So what can we do to make things better? Discuss what by now half the country agrees that the, the plant has benefits, medical benefits, or even if we disagree on that, how are we helping a person that has this problem? And throwing people who have, did a, a nonviolent crime uh, is, is a dreadful way to, for a society to deal with problems. It puts also not a lot of undue uh, uh, pressure on, on police, which should be really busy with violent crime. Yeah, and I was, I was wondering too, um, you know, uh, THC was discovered in, in Israel in 1964. And then there was yeah. these two researchers that said, oh my gosh, look at this, this is how it works. And it was like around the time that they were coming up with the idea for endorphins and stuff like that and understanding the the neurochemistry of what it is. And you know, now that we know what it is, it's like, it's not a drug, it's like about 420 something, you know, compounds. And uh, uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. It's like a, it's like a factory, you know, yeah. pulling, pulling this uh, set of chemicals apart uh, is, is so uh, intriguing. I mean, it's really, really an intriguing uh, uh, chemical, you know. That, I, uh, I want to say on this point that uh, Professor Raphael Mishulam, who is one of those researchers and was all these years, the, I think the, the main researcher in the world of, of cannabis, cannabinoids, uh, just passed away, but we actually interviewed him at some point. He didn't make it into the film because, like I said, we planned a movie that was about one year, ended up with a year about a decade of chain. So a lot of things had to remain on the cutting room floor, but hopefully one day we can just release it as a piece on itself. So I did want to mention that anybody who wants to know where we're showing next should follow us. We, our website is AmericanPotStory.com. It's the same also handle on Facebook. American Pot Story is one word on Instagram. Twitter is the pot story. Uh, I think American Pot Story was taken, but there's plenty of ways to follow us, see updates and see where it's playing next. And hopefully we'll post there one day that interview with uh, Professor Mishulam because he was an incredible interviewee and I learned so much from him. Oh, I can't imagine. That must be so great. Yeah, that would yeah. be, you know, some of those little sidebars, uh, you know, somebody might see something like that and then go, oh, well, I didn't, I, I, I found this, but I didn't even know that there was a movie attached to it. You know what I mean? It's, exactly. so, so, it's so amazing how this thing is uh, connected. You know, you find a root way over here and it's like, oh, there's the tree. It's about, you know, 50 feet away. <laughs> I had no idea. It's, uh, you know, that's, that's the web. Well, thank you very much for your time. And I just, we just wish you the, you know, the, the best with your project and, uh, and, and please, um, you know, check this film out, everyone. Um, you know, we love the trailer. We think it, it was very, very effective. But congratulations on that. And um, please uh, keep everyone informed as to what, Next is happening the you know the film festival circuit the public screenings and and everything that's involved and thank you so much 
uh, for being generous with your time. Uh, just like uh, when you made your first call to Richard Lee, just a cold call. Hello, we like your film. It's like, okay, that's nice. Let's connect. Yes, wonderful to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much.